Hi, this is Ron Sipsik. In this particular segment, we're going to take a look at the question, why is monopoly a market failure? Now let's recall, let's take a mo moment and recall, because we've talked about this in an earlier lesson, uh, what a market failure is. This is going to be a case where the market, if it's left uh, to its own devices, to, uh, to, to work on its own, with no government interference, uh, the market is not going to produce at a socially optimal price and quantity. So in essence the market fails because it does not arrive at the optimal equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. In the case of a market failure, a government will have a role to play in perhaps helping the market achieve optimality or move closer to optimality. In this particular case we want to compare a competitive market to a monopolized market. And in the case of pure competition, the market operates where supply equals demand. So the price, the price will be where supply equals demand, and we call that PE, the equilibrium price, and the quantity will be where supply equals demand, and that will be the equilibrium quantity. Now let's not forget that the supply curve in a competitive case, the supply curve is really the sum of the MCs of each individual firm. So if we take the marginal cost cur curve of each firm, and this would be the marginal cost curve above AVC, um, then we're going to get the supply curve for the firm. If we sum together the supply curves of all the firms, we get a market supply curve. So in essence, the summation of all the MC curves of all competitors, all suppliers, that constitutes the market supply curve. So in a competitive setting, the market operates where? Where supply equals demand. However, when we look at the monopoly model, we see that that is not the case. In the case of monopoly, the market does not operate where supply equals demand. If in fact we look at the competitive equivalent on the monopoly model, Notice in the monopoly model, we do not call this curve over here, we do not call it a supply curve, we call it an MC curve. But in essence, the MC curve is like the supply curve. It's equivalent to the competitive supply curve. Now, there's, there's some uh, difficulties with that, you know, making those two equivalent. But in essence, that's what we'll assume here, that the marginal cost curve of the monopoly is effectively equivalent to the supply curve in a competitive market. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if we look to see where the demand curve equals MC or supply here, we see that PE and QE would be in the same spots. What I've d done here in drawing these two models is I've drawn basically equivalent demand curves and supply curves. So the point uh, of equilibrium in both cases is in the same place. Now, does the monopolist operate where MC equals demand or where supply equals demand? The answer is no. To maximize profits, remember the monopoly operates where MC equals MR. So let me go ahead and put the MR curve in here. And I'm going to put it in there like that. And I'm going to scroll up here a little bit to help me show you this. So, where does the monopolist operate? The monopolist operates where MR equals MC. So we find where MR equals MC. We read down. This is called Q max. This is the quantity where the monopoly maximizes total profit. When we read up, the monopoly operates at P max. Now P max is not the maximum price possible. There are prices above P max that the firm could charge. And uh, I discussed this in an earlier lesson concerning monopoly, that the goal of the monopoly is not to maximize price. The goal of the monopoly is to maximize profit. Where does the monopoly maximize profit? Where MC equals MR. But notice that in doing that, in, in maximizing profit, the monopolist actually produces at a higher than competitive price and produces at a lower than
than competitive quantity. So the argument against monopoly, the basic reason um, that government tries to prevent monopolization when in fact it does. Now remember governments many times create monopolies uh, through things like patents and other, other kinds of regulations, uh, certificates of convenience granted to utility companies. So government is a major creator of monopoly in the world. But government also tries to prevent monopolization. And the argument for, for against monopolization, the reason the government would step in to prevent monopolization is it's trying to keep prices from rising above a competitive level and, and, and it's trying to keep output from falling below a competitive level. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to combine these two pictures and put them in the same space. So let me go ahead and scroll up. We'll move that up. And we're going to draw a third two-dimensional space. So let me go ahead and set this up. I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger here. There's my vertical axis. And I don't want green any longer. So we are going to, um, we are going to get rid of that. I get to use my erasing function. I like to use my erasing function. That's fun. All right, so let's get back to black. Back to black. Back to a straight line. So here's our vertical axis. We'll draw the vertical axis. And then we're going to draw in the horizontal axis. We're going to put in a demand curve. We're going to put in an MC curve or a supply curve and that's it and let me just go ahead and get back this is going to be supply or MC depending on if it's competitive it's supply if it's monopoly it's MC the demand curve is the demand curve capital D and then this is the equilibrium point in a competitive situation where supply equals demand so we'll read across this is PE. We'll read down. This is QE. Okay. And of course, the monopoly does not operate at PE, QE. Where does the monopoly operate? Well, we'll use our green again. The monopoly operates at a higher than competitive price, PM, and therefore produces at a lower than competitive price quantity, QM, okay? So again, the effect of monopolization is to push the price where? Push the price above equilibrium and to push the output rate below competitive equilibrium. Now, let's go ahead and use consumer producer and societal surplus modeling to investigate the welfare effects of this. So I'm going to label this area A, this B, this C, this D, and this E. And we're going to scroll down actually. And I'm going to set up a table. All right, back to black. So vertical line. This is a very familiar uh, way of evaluating particularly at a principal's level. Um, this is a very basic way of evaluating the wealth, what are called the welfare effects. How does consumer, producer, and societal surplus change as a result of um, some change in policy or uh, some change in uh, the market, market outcome? Okay, so this will be consumer surplus, producer surplus, societal surplus. This will be the competitive market. Competitive is where the market operates at PE. This will be the monopolized market. This will be when the market's operating at PM. Okay? And then down here, you should be familiar with this kind of modeling. We've done this a number of times. This will be the net effect. Okay? And I'll go back to red. What do consumers get in a competitive setting? They get areas what? A, B, and C. You go, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me scroll up. Remember what consumer surplus is. 
consumer surplus is what? Below the demand curve, above the what? Above the price line. So A, A, B, and C. Producer surplus is below the price line, above the supply curve. So that would be D and E. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll back down, complete our table, the first row of our table, I should say. So this will be A, B, and C. This will be D, comma, E. This will be A through E. The, and the monopoly model, it's going to change. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll use a different color here. Um, let me use purple. And we're going to go back up and take a look. What do consumers get? What do consumers get when the price is at PM? Well, consumers get below, below the demand curve, above the price line. They're only going to get area A, right? What are producers going to get? Producers are going to get below the price line, below the price line, so below this price line, above the supply curve. So here's the supply curve out to where we produce. We're only producing out to here now. So producers are going to get what? B and D. B and D. Consumers get A. Producers get B and D. Society loses C and E. So this goes to producers, B and D. C and E are actually lost in this case. All right, so we'll scroll down and we'll complete the table. So what are consumers um, going to get? Consumers are going to only get area A, right? So they lose what? They lose B and they lose C, which means they lose. What do producers get? Producers pick up area B um, and let's just go up and look at it again so you can see it because it's a little bit confusing. Producers pick up area B area B and D. Producers used to get E, D and E. Now they get B and D. So they picked up B and they've lost E. All right, so let's go ahead and go back and let me scroll back down. So producers now get B and D. So the D's cancel. So producers pick up B they lose E. B is greater than E. If you look at the area of B, it's greater than E. There's a net gain in societal welfare to the producer. So what really happens here is there's a welfare transfer. And a major area that the consumer was enjoying has been now transferred, transferred over to it's been transferred over to the producer. And this is what government is trying to guard against, this transfer of wealth from the consumer to the, to the single producer. Now, what is societal welfare? It's A, B, and D. So what is society loss? Society has lost C and E. So society loses because now the market's underproducing. When the market underproduces, we've got a name for that. Now, this is... This is the loss of societal surplus. But we have a name for this, and we've used this name um, already in a number of cases in the excise tax case. Uh, we've used it in, in price ceilings and price floors, but this is known as a dead weight loss. And it's due to monopolization. All right. So monopoly is a market failure. Uh, it's not a matter of uh, assuming the firm is greedier than competitive firms. Uh, in economics, we assume that uh, single producers, say utility companies, uh, single producers of electricity, we don't assume that they're greedier than a farmer who competes with a million other farmers, let's say a corn farmer. 
we assume all business people are equally motivated by profit. But what we're acknowledging here is the market structure itself in pursuing profits, the monopoly will actually uh, reduce consumer surplus um, in such a way that the government will want to prevent that. And the market will overprice and underproduce. And there will be a wealth transfer from the consumer to the produce, from consumers to the producer. And when the government prevents monopolization, it's trying to protect consumers uh, from that loss of welfare. Okay? All right, that concludes our lesson on monopoly, a market failure.